Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This episode, we're going to be talking about our International Player Foundation live stream and all the fun stuff that happened there, as well as the absolute gamma bomb amount of news that dropped this past week at the Gamma event. All sorts of cool previews are coming up in this episode. This is episode 463. Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks now. Again? How many people even play this game? Like, 100 instant of deadpan humor. Over oh, yeah. six oh, people yeah. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fool. I'm gonna be able to edit that out, for sure. That's cool, because of these events, I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5 for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And if you shop at shop.wizkids.com, so the official Hero Clicks WizKids website to buy Hero Clicks and whatnot straight from WizKids, you can use code DIALH10, D-I-A-L-H-10, for 10% off your Hero Clicks order at shop.wizkids.com. Really cool opportunity that WizKids themselves gave us code, and I'm really excited about it, guys. So, anyways, joining me like always in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Yo, I am here, and I am still alive. I know, kind of a shocker, actually, after uh, last night and how late we streamed until 4 a.m. Yeah. It's been a while since I've been awake till 4 on purpose. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Normally that's like when I'm waking up, not when I'm going to bed. Pretty fun. Pretty fun switch up, right? Yeah. Isn't that great? Make me feel like a kid again. Except yeah. not because my bones. <laughs> my bones. My bones of metal. No, they like, ache. They rust. My bones are rusted. <laughs> <laughs> Oxidized bones. <laughs> and then also joining us this week on the podcast is Ian Eggleston. What's going on, Ian? It's going, yeah, in the same boat. It was uh I would say rough morning, but that's just a lie. It was a rough afternoon. Yeah, because that's when we woke up. Uh, yeah, yeah, waking up at like ten and just being like, <sighs> and then being like, yeah, I'm gonna get some water, gonna go back to bed, and then you know, just dealing with like the storm of like Facebook and all that, like a billion notifications, notifications like yeah. swiping through that in the morning when you're like half awake, because I mean, it, you know, you're just like, okay, yeah, 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 and then you go right back to sleep. So that was that was today. It is the day after that we're recording this. Yeah. So if there's any. Uh, goofs and gabs and slurred speech and yawning or whatever that's why we're really tired and mentally pretty burnt out but let's go ahead and jump into what made us happy this week and what we're doing this week is share a highlight from the stream so ian do you want to share a highlight from the stream for you yeah uh i think the highlight of the stream for me um, was the popularity of the Jeopardy games that we played. We originally made four boards. We ended up making two more during the streams because more people just wanted to play. So I thought that was really cool that people were enthusiastic about it. I really enjoyed it. And yeah, I just, I didn't think it would be that way. I thought it'd be just kind of a fun little side thing, but it ended up being quite the main event. A lot of emails, a lot of messages yeah. asking to play. A bunch of people joining our Discord to play. That was really cool. And then I think secondarily was uh, people donating for me to freestyle about giant size and being a min minority in the HeroClix community, being over six feet. <laughs> that was uh, that was hilarious. I had a great time doing that as well. But really, the the whole stream was fun. Time wasn't real. No, it that. wasn't until it was over. Then it was very real. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's what I would say is the highlight for me. Yeah, the highlight for me, uh, other than when it ended, which was at 4 a.m., other than that point, because um, what, at that point we had been streaming for nearly 12 hours. We started at 5 p.m., uh, so we hit the 11-hour mark, and I know I didn't get good sleep the night before, so I was really struggling. I was trying to hold it together, but um, other than that highlight, just seeing how many people turned out to donate uh, for... I mean, essentially nothing. You really don't get anything tangible from the donations, but uh, just seeing us do silly stuff, it was really fun. Uh, somebody donated for dance time. People donated for uh, what we called tortilla duels, which I was the loser of twice. And I will, Undefeated. I will get my revenge. I will have my <laughs> revenge. But uh, no, just seeing people turn out. Uh, gosh, 
one of our most prolific streams as far as viewership. It was insane how many people it were was. in the stream, not just like four certain spots, but almost all the way till 3 a.m. We had over 30 at any given point. There was only like a few dips here and there, but we hit 40. We hit thir- like we dropped down to 30 and it was just insane. It was like 3 a.m. And I was like, how is 30 people still watching? Like, what are you guys doing? And we asked them, like, why are you guys still here? Several like, times. We weren't even doing anything at that point. It's like, say, yeah. well, let's play Jeopardy again. It's like, ah, fine. There I'll was make multiple times we, we were just like <laughs> dead for content. We were like had nothing left to talk about, really. We were just like, someone donate. Someone do something. We need something to happen. Uh, but 30 people were still watching. I think it was like a, it wasn't even like a train wreck at that point, but like, I feel like they were hoping that it would be or something. I don't know. I, I don't know why they were still there. We, no we idea. ended close, close. We were on the brink of a train yeah. wreck. We were getting close. I think if it, if we had tried to force another hour, we would have had quite literally nothing left because I was stretching for something to talk about hero clicks wise, but no, uh, that was a huge highlight. I can't believe our stream popped off that big. And I mean, big for HeroClick standards, obviously, but really big just by our normal metrics. So it was kind of insane. I agree. That was a huge part of it. Um, one of my favorite things that was a big highlight for me during the stream was obviously being able to talk about the new Pegasus Captain America again. Thanks, Wiz Kids, for letting us do that. That was awesome. We'll get more into that later. But uh, when we did a little bit of the uh, Dial H trivia near the end there, uh, Edison Lee just getting the Dial H trivia off the bat was really awesome, especially when a lot of our Patreon members and Dial H super fans themselves didn't know uh, what it was. So that was really fun. And just interacting with the chat the whole time was just a grand old time. So really quickly, before we jump into the news... I want to remind people that the Heroclix for Huntington's event is next week. None of us are going to be able to be there in person. So sadly, there's not going to be any Dial H coverage of the event. But I believe there's going to be some live streams. Not as many as we would want as a community for reasons. uh, But that's just the way it is. And hopefully we see a lot of pictures and cool things coming out of that event. If you aren't going and you want to try to play online, you can do so at the ROC Discord. Brad is going to be running $10 Battle Royals of Spider-Man. You don't get to keep any of the figures, but there's all sorts of prizes to win, like a Scott Crampton, Scott Porter, or Spirit of the Game Bystander, as well as tarot cards, legacy cards, uh, and team-up cards, I believe. And those are $10, and 100% of the profit go, or 100% of that donation goes straight to Huntington's, which is really, really awesome. So try to look out for that. If you want to support the Huntington's uh, and you can't make it to the events, there's also the auction on Oxit and whatnot. So let's go ahead and get into all these awesome previews we saw this week, uh, because we have a lot to talk about. It's going to be hopefully not too long of a show because we're all pretty tired, but there was a dumb amount of news. I'll start it off here uh, talking about the Captain America Pegasus, which again, WizKids uh, gave this to us and they said, hey, you can use this for your live stream, which helps you get donations, hit a certain amount, whatever. Uh, you can go ahead and preview this figure. So it was really cool that we got to show off, especially for me, a huge Captain America fan, to talk about this figure and get to do an exclusive preview. So what does he got? He has the Asgardian Avengers Defenders Animal Past Soldier and Warrior keywords. He has the Avengers team ability, and I'm going to read that really quickly because it has it is new. For all friendly characters with this team ability, at the beginning of the game, choose a team ability. This character modifies attack plus one when attacking one or more characters with the chosen team ability printed on their base. So that's really cool. So think he may have a plus one attack. When we go over his dial, just think, oh, maybe he actually has a, a 12 or a 13 instead of just an 11 or a 12. Okay. Anyways, he has improved movement, ignores characters straight up, which is awesome. He has flight for range, two targets, and that's it for special combat symbols. He's either a 125 points or 40 points, which are some interesting point values. He is eight clicks of life at his top dial, or he only has four clicks of life for his bottom dial. He has one trait, which is trust me, they can be useful in reference to kind of giving out shields here. It gives him ESD and leadership and other friendly characters that are adjacent or that have the as guardian or Avengers keywords can use energy seal deflection. So he's just giving ESD to your entire Avengers team. I like that again, when we're getting rid of theme team probability control, things that work off keywords is very huge. So I'm a big fan of that trait. And then we'll talk about his special attack power. He has his entire dial. It's Yarnbjorn. So this cap has Thor's old ax on his sculpt. 
and it gives when Captain America targets a single character with an attack, that character can't use defense powers. So since it's target and not hit, uh, things like super senses or any evasion powers are not in effect for that attack, which is really, really cool. Uh, and then he has a special speed power on his first click, his fifth click, which is his second starting line, his first starting line, and then his eighth click, which is his very last click of life, which is leading by example, hypersonic speed, period. When Captain America uses it and hits, after resolutions, choose up to two friendly characters. This turn, the chosen characters use char can use charge, so it gives people charge, and they modify speed plus one when they use it. So that's really cool. So he kind of leads the charge, he hits them, and then, oh, if he hit, everybody gets to follow through, and they get to use charge themselves to plus one speed uh, because they're kind of following Cap into battle. So, Captain America's got hypersonic speed. He only has a 9-speed top dial, or I'm not going to get too crazy into his stats, but basically he's got that special speed power with 3 clicks of hypersonic, speed power again, 2 clicks of charge, speed power again, attack power the whole dial. He has invulnerability at both starting lines. He goes on it some enhancement after his first few clicks in his first starting line, and then he has empower, or sorry, invulnerability, then he goes to toughness, and then invulnerability that goes to combat reflexes on his last three clicks. He has empower on both starting lines, and then he goes on to some enhancement later uh, in that starting line and then he gets empowered again at the beginning of his fifth click and then he rolls on a close combat expert for the rest of his dial he has four damage top dial at 125 or he's three damage the rest of the time uh, but then you know close combat expert so he'll actually be a four damage in those last few clicks too this guy is i think really insane honestly uh, oh he's up, he's meta uh no defense powers just gets to hit you for three damage straight through he has some power so if you overreach with him and you just left him there the other two characters that get charged can use his empower to also bash on somebody but then if you want to just swoop in hit and then fly away which is very pegasus like he ignores characters so you don't have to worry about a pesky breakaway roll if you want it to be close but he also has four range uh two targets feels like he's got both yarn bjorn and his shield I think this is a very thematic figure. He gives Spider-Man a shield right away during the run, so that's very thematic for his first trade. Uh, Captain America leads by example. He swoops in first, and then the rest of the Avengers, or uh, it was actually, I think this is why he has Defenders, honestly, because Iron Fist and Luke Cage were also part of this like Strike Force team, so that's very fitting. Uh, and then Yarnbjorn finally kind of does what Yarnbjorn should. Yarnbjorn like, pierces Celestial Armor in a lot of different Thor runs, so it's... I think finally has the better, Jay made a meme where it was like the old Yarnborn object, which is like, oh, crit hit on a nine through 11 and also a 12 versus this Yarnborn is like way better. Just straight up can't use defense powers when you get targeted. Don't even have to hit yet. When you get targeted uh, for that attack, which is really awesome. 40 point line, but you can play a ton of these guys. I like him a lot. He's got a really beautiful sculpt and you can get him at Worlds if you're curious about when he's being released. WizKids made an article. He's available at Worlds. Man, he's awesome. I really, really like him. I can't wait to own a ton of these guys. Uh, I haven't said this about a Captain America since Captain America Resilient, and that was, or Resilient, whatever. Uh, this will be the Captain America I play on like almost every team while he's still modern. And that's what I said about Cap Resi, and I can finally say that for sure about this Captain America. But yeah, guys, what do you think? I think he's freaking awesome. I can't wait to play him. I mean, this this figure is straight up meta-defining. Yeah. Like, that. that's how good this is. A full dial of ignored defense powers is insane. The 40-point line, the animal keyword to pair with things like Kazar and Lockjaw, who are also mm. very yeah. meta figures. Um, handing out to Avengers is also great. There's plenty of like meta Avengers already. So I think this was Kari and Iron Man is so good. Oh, it's gonna be dirty. Now he's got you know maxed out defense from range. He's got plus three movement plus now. Plus three speed now with charge. So you yeah. can choose something else if you want to. Sidestep and then like charge. Flurry, you precision. Flurry. Oh yeah, perhaps flurry. That, that usually would be combos good. with charge. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, I I like the idea of running like three of them at yeah. um, 120 points. The first one goes in. You don't even care about the charge, but the first one goes in. Character can't use their defense. He does three. The second one comes in. Can't use their defense. He deals four. The third one comes in and deals <laughs> five when they Very still true. can't use their All defense. Like, power. Yeah. I mean, obviously nice. he's he's got a short dial at 40 points, but he's gonna be like a. I don't know, and uh, essentially a nutcracker. Like he gets through a tough dial on his own, yeah. or he just sets up for an even bigger hit. But no, uh, the two friendly characters gaining charge, like in Silver Age. There's just so much you can do with it. It's yeah. so awesome. There's so much, and it's not hard to with that. You know, they can't use defense powers when targeted. It, you can easily make sure that he hits. It's pretty easy to make sure a forty point character with an eleven hits when like uh they can't use mastermind Especially super senses etc 
whatever team ability right for Avengers. Nice yeah. Twelve attack. So he's a twelve, or you just have a couple perplexes the if you problem, if you really yeah. need him to hit so that you get some charges off. Like I'm not necessarily gonna play him with uh, Mistress Death from uh, Deadpool, but uh, or what's your Deadpool, Deadpool X Force? Yeah. Deadpool, Deadpool yeah. X Force. Yeah, I'm not necessarily gonna play him with that, but that's like the first thing I think as a character that just really benefits from getting charge. And a plus one speed. So that would she's be really got a, good for her. Yeah. She's got like a six speed charge all of a sudden with a touch of death. But no, there's so many options. And uh, also, I mean, we should just mention the sculpt is awesome. Oh, like so cool. Yeah, it's oh, gonna yeah. have to come in a large box because like the the wings are huge, uh, super highly detailed. This is obviously just. I a imagine it'll be like the uh, the Warp World Phoenix box because she yeah. also had those wild big wings. Yeah. So. I, I like the sculpt. I think this will make an awesome shelf piece. And for as long as it's modern, it's probably going to be on a lot of Three teams. years of this. Yeah, yeah multiples. You, wow. You'll, you'll see this in multiples. Another thing to note that I think makes this figure really fun, what I'm looking forward to doing with him is... Uh, so it says when Captain America uses hypersonic and hits after res- resolutions, choose up to two friendly characters. Mm-hmm. So they don't have to be standard. So you can oh, give yeah. charge to your bystanders. You can give charge to something like Galactus, who has zero make movement, a, with plus driver, one speed now. My chainsaw story. gets to charge now. Oh, my your God. chainsaw can charge. Hilarious. Yeah, dude. I uh, I love that. That's really funny. Anything that makes bystanders better. Like, bystander generation is easily my favorite mechanic in the game. So this guy will lead the charge with, you know, whatever bystanders you want, which is so awesome. That is gnarly. It's also wild. Like, this is a complete side note, but it's wild that he's empty. Im- 23001 so he's the first of like the convention exclusives oh, yeah. as far as numbering goes the first exclusive and he wasn't shown <laughs> off until his kids let us show him off so i don't know it, it's just surprising i didn't even keep track of which ones like what the numbering what was for uh, yeah. the other ones but i did notice that and i was like huh so he's like technically the i don't know the what do you call that? The main character of the convention exclusive. Year. <laughs> he's him. Yeah, he's, he's him. him. He's that yeah. guy. He's ah. him. Uh, next up, one I'm very excited for. I'm. You know, we've heard the rumors. We got a little slideshow preview from the same Gamma trade show of DC Hero Clicks Notorious featuring the Joker on the steps that we've already seen. A polka dot man, which is like. That's I mean, really cool. That is so awesome. Really I love the, the cheesy characters like that. But we also get a first look at the Black Lanterns, and it is Black Lantern Martian it's Manhunter. Beautiful sculpt, man. Beautifully cut up cape. I mean, floating there. It's Martian Manhunter as a Black Lantern. Do I even need to describe it? So, so cool. No dials on screen, guys. Just a, a preview of the pictures. If you want to check these out for yourself, you can head over to Bellevue Hero Clicks, which is B E L L E V U E. Space Hero Clicks. Go ahead and check out those images. So yeah, we saw a little bit more from Notorious. Really, really cool. The Black Lanterns are real. And man, uh, my wallet, I don't know about you guys, my wallet's shaking. Yeah, it's a super cool sculpt. My One thing I, I love about hurting. a lot of these Gamma previews is uh, obviously like the box art and stuff that we saw. Um, but it's not the 3D renderings. It's actual pictures of actual sculpts for a lot of these. And so that Martian Manhunter you know that he's like going to come out looking awesome because that's the actual sculpt that they're showing there. It yeah. looks uh, so the good. Paint, I can't explain, but like the paint jobs that like we've been seeing coming very, out of Camp Gamma, very glossy, shiny awesome. paint. Yeah, I they've like been it. like he's got metallic stripes. Uh, yes. He's like black and to like silver. Tape. And yeah, there's just so much detail work going on. Like if they if you told me that Martian Manhunter was a convention exclusive, I'd buy it. Like I'd believe that yeah. it was a convention exclusive because it looks like it's got extra detail work done to it. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Uh, I don't know what other Black Lanterns they're gonna go with. I mean, if there's a Black Lantern Batman, I have to buy it. <laughs> if we get to see something like uh, I don't know how they don't make Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman. Even though we already yeah, have Wonder Woman, that's I guess, true. That's a Black Lantern. But how maybe do they like not always make Firestorm it would be another cool one. I, I loved his sculpt in War of Light. Generic undead shark. <laughs> the, the Aquaman, because we had the Black yeah, Lantern Aquaman yeah, that could cool. raise the sharks. Also, the uh, uh, the shark with the surfing Batman. That's another shark. Oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe we get an that's undead true. physical shark. What are, you, what are the chances that they legacy the 2x2 uh, two two Necron? Gosh. Zero. Like, absolutely no zero. Because he's a grand prize. Player. I would like a legacy for that Aquaman, though. That'd be really cool. Yeah. If we don't get a new one. I would, except I 
used mine for a uh, D and D swap, so oh. <laughs> so mine's gone. That would be a great a great uh, legacy theme. Is just more black, black lanterns. lanterns. I mean. Mm, if that's the case, then somebody like Firestorm would probably be a legacy card. I don't know if they'd use. He probably a, would be. Man, yeah. he's so over. At the same time, more light. how many Black Lanterns are there going to be? You know, is this going to be like six? To you know, like if it's like maybe a chase theme, Let's it could 10. be like six. Get twelve. But if it's like super rares too, you know, we could see as many as like ten, twelve. Maybe there's like a couple rare ones because in War of Light there were varying rarities. Among the black, they were all over the place, weren't they? Yeah, it's, like black yeah. hand is a super that, rare. That's what it's going to be. It's gonna oh, Firestorm no, is a rare. Two, can't be played. two rare prime. If that's black a Lanterns, prime, dude. Two super rare primes. Oh, if that's a prime. Yeah, that was oh, a, that was such the a super bummer, man. Prime. Uh, Batman will be the other super rare prime, just like the last Lantern. If you Batman. can't play these together, dude, I'd be <laughs> livid. I'd be so mad. No, they'll they'll have a prime team up card that says like, if this is played with these other ones, you can break the rule of only one prime. <laughs> I like that. I'm waiting for that like to that. come back in some fashion. That'll totally I happen think... as a team up card. Yeah. I feel like that has to. Some prime will do that, right? <laughs> oh, I hope so. If they make a team all primes, yeah. So but, uh, we all see some iconics. We got Batman slapping Robin. This is like just straight up a picture of the figures on the box. It's really funny. Robin has this like red cheek mark uh, where he's getting slapped. Batman is unique. Robin is a wild card. Batman TA. We can see he's 45 points. We don't have their cards yet. But Batman has a lot of text on his card. We can kind of see. Batman's got that big slap effect uh, swing. Next up is Nightfall, which has this sleek Bane uh, mask print. Yeah, it looks like cover. a graphic novel cover. Like it I'm, does. That's straight up the artwork for the Nightfall uh, All right. book, right? Yeah. And inside the Nightfall box is, I, I mean, a competitor for Sculpt of the Year, if not like Sculpt of like the decade for me personally. In the uh, Nightfall box set, you are going to get a Batman the Azrael, which is Azrael Batman, it's not just Azrael. You know, we can go all day about that topic. But you also get a Bane breaking the Batman's back, one of the most iconic panels in like Batman's history. And seriously, guys, definitely go check these sculpts out. What is really unfortunate is that the person who posted these blurred out all of the cards so we could like see the art on them. Yeah. And the flavor text. And the flavor text, which was like I mean, it, it didn't reveal a ton. It was very standard Batman stuff. Uh, Azrael has like a terrorizing Gotham trait, which is pretty cool. Uh, Azrael also features a Batman team ability and a Batman enemy. So he has Gotham City Underworld and Ooh. Batman Family, so you can kind of play him either way. Because if you've read the story, you know uh, he has some trials and tribulations that kind of lead him to being more evil, you know, just due to his genetics, and then uh, kind of speaking with Batman on... You know, maybe why he shouldn't be that way and why he should come towards the light. He's a, he's a harsh, a harsher Batman for sure, yeah. Yeah, the flamethrower's on the wrist, but guys, seriously, I mean, this is seriously two of the greatest sculpts ever. If you're a Batman fan at all, you will be buying this. I don't think you have a choice. And if you're not, you should strongly consider it. I'm really, really hoping that the dials are, like, somewhat playable on this. We did see that Bane was 75 points. The Batman is 60, and then Azrael is 65. So, I don't know. I really don't know what to expect. Batman has a trait and two specials. Bane, same deal. Azrael, I believe the same thing as well. So, you know, they, they could do a lot. It's, it's just hard to tell what direction they're going to go. Because Azrael Batman, I mean, you could make him a, a Charge Blades piece. You could also make him, like, more Batman-esque. Like, it really depends on kind of what aspect of Azrael they want to lean into. So I'm super excited to see the dials. I've talked enough about them. Go check out the pictures. This box set is so freaking cool. Sculpt of the year. You heard it here first. I love that they brought back the uh, onomatopoeia effects. Crack. Yeah, crack. Cracked. Cracked. Uh, they've done that in like multiple ones. Like the the next one that we are, we'll see is uh, the snapping Thanos where obviously just like taken straight out of like a comic panel. Like the infamous like Thanos snap, like it's pretty iconic. It was floating around all the time when uh, Avengers Endgame and stuff was coming out. And if you haven't seen this like image somewhere before, um, I'd be surprised. But it is literally just taken straight from like the comic panel, and it's it's such a cool effect. It's going to be such all of these all the iconics. I think are first and foremost just the best shelf pieces that you can get. Yeah, and hands then, down. Secondly, like the dials that we've seen on some of them, they're 
actually like very interesting pieces to play very fun thematic kind of stuff like the spider-man's when that one came out um i know it, like it plays slightly different than i would normally play a spider-man but it still has like a place that like for like a casual game night you can do some fun stuff and it's also just fun to see on a map but uh no i think the very first thing that you have to say about these is the sculpt work and the paint jobs is on point and they make awesome like shelf pieces the thanos yeah the gold on his suit super metallic really pops and the the face detail is also great like to me that's thanos yeah the cheesy thanos if you know he's been around since infinity challenge and a lot of the time his face looks a little pudgy so yeah. i like this one reminds me of the thanos that we see in like the post credit scene after the first avengers mm, yeah where, like okay, yeah before they redesigned him when he like turns and just like smiles like for the camera <laughs> it's like Thanos says Jim from The Office where he's like, huh? All right, next up, we have Captive Hearts Wolverine. Uh, Captive Hearts Wolverine is pretty awesome. It's obviously the iconic, also memefied panel, not really panel, but uh, scene from the X-Men animated series. I know when X-Men animated series first came out, I was hoping for something similar to this, something that had this flavor, but all the Wolverines were, I think, oh, the only Wolverine, I believe, was a common in that set, so... This one's... Yeah, that main set was honestly just kind of a bummer. Yeah, no Nightcrawler either was I, such a no that one hurt. One of the most that was personal episodes ever. Someone yeah. had said that was like such a good set, and I was like, did you forget about the single base figures? Because like I feel like the yeah. single base figures, like everyone forgot about those because there was not a lot of standouts outside of like nobody, the danger rooms and stuff. Nobody yeah. forgot about Jason though. Well, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, Jason. Honestly, Jean Grey was pretty awesome. Her being able to turn into Dark Phoenix, stuff like that. But but no, um, this Wolverine, he is a peanut base. He is. Uh, he's so his, captive that he's on a bed. Lugging so, his bed around. Yeah, six speed on a bed Wolverine. Uh, six speed is whole dial. He has 45 points. Um, he has a special speed power and then I believe two traits. So, uh, yeah, he's got Alpha Flight, Weapon X, and X-Men, which those all fit for the animated series. Um, I don't remember the Alpha Flight being in. in that, were they in an episode? They they do, were like, they, some flashbacks sometimes. with Wolverine because okay. then, like, there's the episode with Maverick and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah they, they're going to the Weapon X facility. You're right. It might, like, I think they reference Weapon H even at one point. But yeah, he's got he's 45 points. He's got the X Men team ability. He is unique. And uh, yeah, six clicks long. He has six speed. His entire dial with the special speed power. He has 11 attack. His whole dial. He starts with three clicks that are 18 combat reflexes, and then he goes to three clicks of toughness with a 17 defense. He starts off with three damage and battle fury for his first three clicks and then he goes down to some two damage one damage won't matter because he has a traded blades but uh he has battle fury that whole dial um and then just all standard combat symbols with zero range one lightning bolt his first trait is pining after gene and this is i think this is the most uh memeable part of this character uh when wolverine starts the game you choose another friendly character to be his crush so Aww. I love that, like, oh, Wolverine caught a crush on Dark Side, like, oh, or like, you know, like you can make so many options be his crush, but uh, yeah, you pick a friendly character to be his crush, and it's at the beginning of the game, or when he starts the game, so you can literally change it up every different game you play if you find out like there's if he, a better crush option. If he picked Wolverine, Wolverine saying to Wolverine, oh. He's just the best there is at what he does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wolverine. Oh. <laughs> uh, at the end of your turn, if Wolverine's crush is within two squares, you may heal Wolverine two clicks. So that's a super easy way for him to heal up. It makes him a great X-Men like healer battery thing if you want to use him for that team ability. Then he has, if Wolverine's crush is not within two squares, all other uh, characters within two squares modify their attack and damage minus one. So he's got like a little pestilence kind of uh, negative action, but it also affects friendly characters, so keep that in mind. His second trait is, Rawr! I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought that was accurate. Uh, blades, claws, fangs, once per game. So only once. Well, he has blades, just period. And then once per game. When Wolverine uses blades, before rolling, you may choose to increase the result by plus one for each character with the X-Men team ability in your KO area. So there's ways that you could rack these uh, X-Men like KOs up so his once per game blades roll is just stupid high damage <laughs> uh, but it, uh, it does just give him regular blades as well so 
at the very least he has that traded but yeah it's not capped either no because it's it, not a stat it's not a yeah it. it's not a uh, it's not a combat value so yeah you can modify it ad nauseum to infinite amounts technically is there a that is there is a really way good. in silver age this would be absolutely hilarious is there a way in silver age to where you could get a bunch of multiple men on your team because they have x-men right 10 yeah, points yeah, each 10 points. you get eight of them then you pim tank them with a friendly character is there a way? There's somebody who can attack friendlies with the pim tank. There has to be. There's. I feel like you got rid of all the attacking. Or maybe, well. maybe you use like Alex Wilder. Giganta. I mean, Titano can attack friendlies. Okay, so he throws the pim tank so we at Leech, eight multiple men. Titano, eight multiple. You men. move up Wolverine. You roll a six with blades, and you deal a fourteen damage blades claws fangs <laughs> from from your bedside. <laughs> Sorry, I had to get like that it. in there. But yeah, it's not it's capped, good. guys. This is some Apache Chief level. Yeah, that is baller pretty, it's pretty status. He, yeah, in the right situation, he could one shot a Galactus, like top dial Galactus. It's really funny. Um, pretty much anyone without stop clicks, he could one shot, potentially. Uh, his speed power, he has this whole dial, is sidestep, period. And then Wolverine can only be targeted by characters within two squares, which is just super good. Yeah. It makes him really hard to deal with. They have to get in close. Uh, he doesn't have like a super long dial or anything, but if they're within two, then he's also within two of them. Um, it's locked in his room. I don't think he, I don't remember him being locked in his room, but maybe he was like, I'm going to lock the door. <laughs> I'm going to lock the door so no one sees me. Yeah, you literally machine, live with people picture. that can like level buildings and phase through objects. Yeah, there's plenty of people who could just phase right in. <laughs> yeah, like you're like, I lock through the door. No one bother Col me. Colossus would like turn it normally and break the lock. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I didn't even realize it was locked. Sorry, my bad. I just. But no, I think it's a really fun figure. I'm glad he's unique because I think. <laughs> If you had multiple Wolverines crushing on each other, and then uh, just that negative one stats scary. like all over the place, the negative—that's the other thing. If they're within two and able to target him, there's a chance that they have negative one attack and damage. So yeah, there's like that's pretty solid. I I like him. So next up, what I'm really excited to talk about, uh, I think almost all of our favorite set from last year, if not, I know this one best set of the year in our live stream. Uh, end of the year awards show was Disney Plus and we get an announcement for Marvel Studios next phase uh, I assume this is going to be a Disney Plus booster set. We don't see anything like that, but we get to see a picture of Mr. Knight fixing his uh, gloves there. We see She-Hulk. We see Lucky, the pizza dog, the slice of Zaw in his mouth. And we see Konshu uh, from the iconic scene where they're turning the stars, uh, the night sky, back in time thousands of years. So we're probably getting just a Disney Plus wave two, the next set. So I'm really excited for that. That's going to be really awesome. Uh, they're pulling from, at the very least, three shows. So we don't know if we're getting, like, Miss Marvel. We don't know if we're getting Werewolf by Night. Uh, what other Disney Plus? There's She-Hulk, Miss Marvel, Werewolf by Night. There was Moon Knight. There was Hawkeye. The um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special. Yeah, but we'll get into that and then later. That's, well, that, yeah, I'm about to say, we actually... We're but that, is, that yeah. is another show. But, so those are the shows we're seeing so far. Uh, so we actually don't see anything from Miss Marvel or from Werewolf by Night. But we see some Hawkeye stuff, some She-Hulk stuff. I'm excited. I think there's a lot you can do. There were a ton of characters in She-Hulk. You could make the terrible Wrecking Crew. That yeah. Was garbage. You could I old man get, Mr. Uh, Immortal Leap fingers Frog. crossed. I, yeah, old man Mr. Immortal. I the biggest one for me is Daredevil. I want to see a Charlie Cox Daredevil so bad. That would be really oh cool. Oh my gosh! And if we don't get it now, maybe we get it when Daredevil's show comes out in a few years here, and then we get it then. But man, a Charlie Cox uh, mustard and ketchup suit Daredevil would be so freaking awesome. Obviously, Hawkeye Kate Bishop to go with Pizza Dog. You could get a Ronan finally. That'd be really Dude, cool. Dude, that's that's what I would like. We haven't had a Ronin for we we see flashbacks of Ronin. Oh, so wild! We got like an Endgame killing. I think what uh, the Guardians Yakuza. of the Galaxy movie set was the last Ronin we got. Oh, I don't want that Ronin. I want Ronin, not Ronan. Oh, I was yeah, gonna say Hawkeye with the yeah, sword. The last, I don't remember him, but Ronin I was like, I'd love a Ronan. <laughs> Avengers Assemble was the last one we got. Excuse me, but yeah, Ronin's yeah. cool too. We also haven't gotten Ronin yeah. forever. Will it be a Kate Bishop or a uh, Clint Barton though? Oh, her like walking around in it. Yeah, it's I mean she does. She shape. does fight does the tracksuit. She, track suit. With it? she fights she? the tracksuit oh. mafia. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's, that's why it's the on whole, the news. That's the premise of Hawkeye. That's literally the plot is like Clint has to stay because she has the tracksuit mafia on yeah. her case. 
So that, that, that'd be really cool. We could There's get, also uh, probably some characters that we didn't see in Disney Plus One, you know, from the previous shows that yeah, we might did miss, uh, we miss some, like, for Battlestar. Please, Justice for Battlestar. That'd be so awesome. And we do know we're getting that extra Watcher this year. So, But yeah, this is really neat. This is like the first time we've seen this from WizKids is a Guardians of the Galaxy holiday calendar. And it is the ones from the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. It says that on the box. And then also Drax is wearing his laser eyes cat sweater. And Groot is real real thick Groot here. Real muscular. Thick boy. Really round Groot uh, with his little uh, antlers and tree uh, ornaments, uh, light bulbs and stuff. So I don't know if this is going to be like a calendar, like it's an advent calendar where it's like 12 days of Christmas or like the 24 days that lead up to Christmas Eve necessarily, like a lot of advent calendars do. And you just punch one out for each hero clicks figure. That'd be fun. That'd be really cool. I would like to do a video series where I know most people are probably just going to instantly pop them all open because it's a figure whatever. But I think it'd be really cool and cute to count down to Christmas or whatever and you just pull a little Guardian of the Galaxy 12 days of Christmas style out of your your if they if they didn't do that, you know, with the beautiful artwork that they've done with the Iconics boxes, I also think yeah. it'd just be cool if they did, like, a Christmas present box. You know, if we got, like, yeah. a, a maybe, like, a Hellfire Gala display, I, but it's I a Christmas the, present that opens. I want some That'd be kind of fun. wrapping paper if they want to sell that. <laughs> dude, really funny, with little dials on it or something. My whole family would be getting clicks wrapped paper. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. No question. Awesome. If you could buy a roll of that, so, it's yeah. game over. Uh, I really was hoping Drax would have his little man, though. Uh, his elf. That'd be really cute. Yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. Big candy cane. So hopefully we still get something like that. But there's a lot you can do with it. Maybe even we finally get Valentine from Tremors, <sighs> a.k.a. Kevin Bacon in Heroclix. <laughs> that's what it's all about. Give us Kevin! But uh, we'll see what happens. But that's going to be really exciting. It does say 12 figures, so... Oh, does it say, did it say 12 figures? Oh, yeah. it does. Yes. I totally missed that. Then yes, it'll be a 12 Days of Christmas-esque box. Oops. But all right. Let's jump over to the next thing. There's literally so much stuff. Guys. This is so cool. I... I absolutely love these. I'll talk about the DC side of things because I know Simeon just loves the Marvel one. Oh, uh, we're getting two new starters, one of which is Marvel, one's DC. Big surprise there. The DC side, we're getting a new Harley Quinn featuring kind of like her new outfit. Is that kind of like the, what, like the Suicide Squad style? That's like style? After New 52 Suicide Squad. It's yeah. a little hard to tell because that part of like the screen is like washed out, but... Yeah, it is. It looks to be the same kind of color style yeah. there, but she's not doing anything crazy. She's kind of standing there. I can't tell what she's holding either. Could There's be a, a Superman or a baseball bat. Like, who knows? It's got to be a honestly. baseball bat. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure. The lighting's just weird on the picture that was taken, but... Yeah. The Superman is really cool, though. He's doing kind of like a Falcon Punch midair. Superman Punch, some would say. Yeah, Roman Reigns <laughs> Punch. Uh, we also get a Batman pointing his grapnel gun to the sky there with his cape flowing a bit. Pretty solid. I dig it. It's really cool, really fun. And then also a Wonder Woman with a lasso and a shield kind of in, like, her, her armor. And, yeah, I mean... They did note uh, Calder's looks correction really good. on uh, Wonder Woman lassoing, though. Yes! The rope is Finally. in front of her feet now. It so. would make... Uh, yeah, so when you actually throw it, it can travel and it can go. <laughs> I'm like, thank you, finally. Oh, yeah, that chase had it, like, wrapped it around her It was behind leg. her legs, so if she threw it, it would just fall straight to the ground because <laughs> her legs would stop the rest of the slack from going forward. So, yes, finally, she's throwing... Maybe she'd throw, throw it rope. hard enough to, like, drag herself. Maybe it's like Thor no. throwing his hammer to fly. None of that. No, none of that. <laughs> it's a magic... It's a magic rope and a uh, magic super-powered woman. Her legs are physically in she front. She can have her rope wherever she wants. Her goes. legs are physically in front of the rope. It's not going to go very far at all. So, yes, finally this Wonder Woman fix solves that problem. Her rope is actually in front of her, so when she throws it, she can let out this. Well, the slack is, like, sitting on the ground, which does kind of make no sense there. But at the very least, it will travel. Uh, versus not at all. Calder is doing the motion of throwing Yeah, I don't know why. So as no he's else, talking he's, here. Yeah, so when she actually <laughs> throws it, you... you it's, yeah. He's he's made a very very compelling case thank with you, the thank with you. those actions. Anyways, continue, continue. <laughs> this visual podcast that we're clearly filming. When right Wonder now. Woman throws her mighty lasso, lasso. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how the rest <laughs> of that song goes. Uh, yeah. So they they announced that they're going to have smaller starter sets uh, with four figures instead of uh, like the eight or whatever we're used to. It's like but, ten uh, right now. It's yeah. Ridiculous. But. We're not sure what all those like starter sets will have other than like four characters. The Marvel side though, what we do know is like we don't know if these are sculpt reuses or what, but they look like all four brand new sculpts cuz I have I've never seen sculpts these like this before. These could be chase sculpts and you'd be happy. They, oh yeah. They are so high quality sculpt wise and again like 
Uh, these mm -hmm. aren't digital renderings. These are actual sculpts that like they took pictures of. The Spider-Man is on top of like the peak of a building. So he's like on like where like the flagpole would be for like the Daily Bugle. And he's doing like a selfie with a pose. It's an awesome Spider-Man sculpt. It's so highly detailed. It's crazy. The Iron Man has this giant like flamey so effect. Good. Like, smoke, I don't know, smoke effect kinda, coming yeah. out of his feet. And then he's doing like a repulsor blast, which is super iconic. And then there's a higher detailed image where you can tell like his armor has like a metallic shine to it. And it's kind of nuts. Um, we get a Black Panther throwing vibranium darts, which like we don't, I assume, vibranium daggers or darts oh, or something. We never get that. We never get like that effect. But yeah, it does look very Gambit-esque because it's the same kind of color as Gambit's like throwing explosive stuff, his kinetic energy stuff. But uh, I think Black Panther's the weakest one where he's, he's just kneeling down while throwing. But the, the effect is still really cool. And then we get a Carol Danvers doing a giant flying cosmic punch similar to superman's giant flying cosmic punch but uh yeah it's just insane the level of detail and if these are sculptor uses they're like super rare or chase level because it's nuts um yeah so we do see they come with like the cardboard action tokens a set of dice some form of map probably four panels but maybe like like that four tiles but maybe it's just going to be one or two and uh, yeah, we we can see some of like what their dials and stuff do, but we're not gonna get too into the weeds because we don't know the whole story of the dials outside of just a few stats. So there's no point in really covering those yet. We see some more news to go with Avengers 60th, which is really neat. We get to see Thor, who looks kind of odd, funny little hat Thor. Yeah, we see a it's probably goofy. a common or uncommon Captain Marvel sculpt. She's just kind of standing there, hitting the hitting the side hip pose there. But then we see Doctor Doom Supreme, oh. uh, as you know, Drip God Doctor Doom here, looking insane. He's got a big <laughs> green energy blast. He's got the fluffy like white fur collar, uh, and his cape is flowing in the wind. He's really tall. His like flight effect is very, very high for him, so he's going to be it really is. tall. Uh, and he looks really cool. He looks really good. So I'm I not like alone it. in this, uh, but WizKids is after me. They're, they're after my wallet, they man. Money, bro. They, they've they got the red dot pointed right at my money. Batman! And it, <laughs> Ow! Thanos! <laughs> oh, I love it! Boom. But please, stop! <laughs> It's amazing, guys. If this ends up being the Ultra Chase, uh, oh, man, it's going to hurt. But I'll have to own it. I'll, I'll have to own it. I, I'm, I mean, it's in my mind, this is at minimum a chase. There's just no way it isn't. I mean, Demon in Armor looks very similar. And he, oh, he was a chase. He was a chase, yeah. yeah. I met the invincible Doctor Doom, who was also kind of similar to both of them. He was still a super rare, the title character. Yeah. He looks but, similar to Man, both. this is... It could be a super rare or a super rare prime, but... Yeah, that's I like agree. almost it's worse. Most likely, uh, <laughs> it would be worse. Most likely, a chase of some form. Uh, I will say again, I don't know if they're if it's just like going forward or what, but the sculpts and the paint jobs that they're like showing on these, the Thor has an actual oh, definitive no. shine to his uh, like hammer and realize. stuff. It's like a reflective metallic, and it just looks like the picture looks so good. Mjolnir actually looking like it's chromed out instead of just like a flat gray paint base. It's insane. Yeah, it looks really cool. I like it a that lot. That Thor does look goofy though. He's rocking he's like a, a, he's a Wally West hat yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Very like OG, like golden age kind of Thor like, look. Almost but he's so chunky. Thor. That that Thor was like, he has, like drinking chocolate milk. wrapped around his arms, but they're not painted. So maybe this is a different, maybe this is like an AB prime version potentially for Thor. Because they look weird. <laughs> for any know. NFL fans, this is like Kelvin Benjamin Thor. He's that was a player a, that just got really fat. Tape or whatever on his arms. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we get to see the play at home kits. We've seen all these before. Iron Man kit supposed to come with the Iron Doom lace card. Which is Do cool. you know what armor this is? I assume this is a uh, silver centurion. No, it's not. Silver centurion had like it's, red. It's like his. It it's. I know it's one of his best armors, but I can never remember the name of it. It's like is the nanotech not, armor. Not a superior Iron Man armor. Is it superior? It, no. It doesn't look. I guess superior white. was white. Oh, you're right. It was white. Yeah. I have no idea what this is. This is his anti-titanium man armor. No, I. I honestly have no idea. <laughs> I have no clue, lead but it's cool looking. Armor. Yeah. It. It's it gives himself lead reminiscent <laughs> of like the Mark One, but only in like color and. Yeah, like, just just color. It's yeah. not like bulky and weird. No, it's not. Or, or, yeah, uh, we see Captain America, who's a very weird sculpt. He's kind of like lining up a shield throw, like with one hand, kind of using that to aim, and then he's maybe gonna throw his shield. It's very 
different sculpt. It's dynamic pose, but it's just one we've never seen from Cat 4, so it's kind of neat. And what costume is this, Calder? Is this his, like, this first is like appearance? His OG, I would say this is his OG Avengers run, Captain America, for how big the wings are. There's no gray in his armpits or on his shoulders. So this is just kind of, I would say, a classic Avengers Captain America. It's not first appearance, but it's classic Avengers Cap. True. And this Hulk is huge. Oh my gosh. Thickest neck in hero clicks right here. Uh, <laughs> Hulk is got just big massive fists and muscles and whatnot and this is a pretty normal hulk purple pants green skin oh i didn't realize the back of the box was shown dr doom must be a chase because he's on the back of the box chases yeah. have almost always been on the back of the box for forever so that he has to be a chase then i didn't realize that <laughs> i'm okay. really i'm just really hoping it's not the ultra chase like oh my gosh I have we seen the Ultra Chase in the back of the box? In the I don't past? know. I, I, I was can't remember if Thanos ABPI. was. Yeah. I don't think I don't think Thanos was. I thought it was Black Panther. But I don't was remember. The chase for ABPI, that black uh, the ten black, million BC ten million BC Black Panther. I think yeah. was in the back of ABPI. Other than that, we do have some OP set comings up yeah, coming up as well. They're bringing OP sets back. Uh, we've talked about it a little bit, but uh, they're coming back and they're not going to be sets of three. It's going to be a single of like one of each figure. So it is a set of three figures. Again, it's going to be like the standard where um, you have two reused sculpts with new dials and then a new sculpt, new dial figure in there. And then one of them is going to come with a mystery card and then one of them is going to come with a legacy card. And by mystery card, I mean like the Batman team up style the mystery clue card. Cards. Not just like, a, yeah. not just like oh, some random card. A mystery here. card. Yeah. <laughs> what card did I? Oh, mine's from ADW. Like, <laughs> oh, no. Uh, but this yeah. one is pretty I I don't know like the Moon Knight one I'm not as excited for I think the Fantastic Four one just is a, cooler it's a big old 200 point Moon Knight yeah we, we get to see uh, Phoenix Force Moon Knight so that is cool that he's Phoenix Force it's not so cool that it is um, just plain looking Moon Knight yeah he doesn't have any flame effects so you will have to mod on some flame effects if you want him to truly look Phoenix Force or you could just paint it he could still be legal paint that's some, true paint some flame effects on his cape a little hot rod <laughs> Yeah, yeah, give him, like, the, the decals on the side of a car kind yeah, of flames. Yeah, <laughs> racing stripes on the oh, thigh. Oh, that'd be so stupid. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're not going to get in the dials too much, but he has 200 points. Um, he does have some really cool, like, Phoenix effects. He's got Cosmic Deity, Detective, Mystical, and Warrior keywords, which will matter when we get to the mystery card. Yeah, I this Moon Knight is just kind of a bummer. He can come back to life. He can deal some free damage with his hypersonic. You can alternate between like energy shield deflection, combat reflexes, barrier. But overall, guys, it's it's pretty disappointing. It's cool to have it in the game, but honestly, eh. It just this is. Uh, it's, it's, it's right. It would have been perfectly fine at a hundred points. Like, it wouldn't. I don't even think it would be broken at a hundred points. No? Um, his opening stats are pretty wild. Ten, price, 12, 19, 12, 5. five. Yeah, I think but, I think 200 without a question is way too expensive for what this guy does. He revives on a, a terrible click like lift. Yeah, it's yeah. really bad. But Black Knight, he's this is like this is great. Just Black a Knight nice simple hero click from so Avengers we, Galactic Storm. Black Knight. Yes. We, yeah, his rubber sword, yeah. dude. He uh, he clocks in at 60. He's just a standard charge piece at the front of his dial. Switches over to flurry later, and he only has one special. Uh, He's got Blades, Claws, Fang, Steel Energy. When Black Knight makes an attack with a single target and misses, after resolutions, deal him and the target one avoidable damage. I like the idea of him using his lightsaber and kind of whiffing both and hitting himself in the other Bricking himself a little bit going, yeah. ow! Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. It's a really just fun, cool, yeah, simple solid dial. figure. Yeah. The most exciting figure in this one, though, easily is Harrow. He's got yeah. a trait that lets him generate uh, up to two test subjects as a power, and when he does, they get autonomous for the turn. He's got some mastermind toughness, clocks in at 35, and then the most interesting part of him, I think, is that he has free, choose an adjacent friendly character. That character can use impervious until your next turn. Yeah, dang. Just, I don't know right, where that the fits in. Best defense juices in the game, free. Wait, yeah. what? I don't huh? know where it fits in, though. That's what makes it so interesting. Is like, it's like the thing that I think most is somebody that's got reduces pen damage but doesn't already have impervious. <laughs> I'm like the Fantastic Thors have toughness with uh, reduced pen. Uh, there you go. So like, yeah, combo him like with whichever one of those is the best or something. That's like my first go-to. But also just giving Death stroke, giving Super somebody that already change. has like uh, impervious, someone that already has rollouts because impervious isn't a be like a hard thing to deal with unless they already have like shape change oh, super so, senses. Yeah. And then you're like, well, you gotta I, pick. Yeah, I gotta pick <laughs> one of them to get rid of. You're probably going with like. You know, depending on the situation, shape change or super senses, so that you can at least land the hit. But then, if they hit impervious and you don't have pen damage, 
it's like real rough. It um, is. It is just like an insane utility that we've never really seen before. Handing out impervious yeah. for free. I thought the perplex for invulnerability from Sentry was good, but this is just straight up. Nah, here's impervious. Free impervious, and yeah, the bystanders he makes having him power as well and yeah. charge. He can give impervious to his bystanders. Yeah. I don't know if you necessarily are like itching to do that, but yeah. it is really uh, funny. It does make them hard to like harder to deal with. You can't just like. I mean, you can kind of just ignore them, but you can't just easily uh, KO them. Give so. my chainsaw impervious. <laughs> also, is this like the first mention we've had of Autonomous in like... It's been a hot minute, it's yeah. It's been like two years, I feel like. What was the last Since, Autonomous figure? Was it Maggot? Maggot may be one of the last ones. I, I'm i struggling Scratchy's to think... Scratchy's Autonomous from Disney+. Plus. Scratchy is, yes. Yeah. Yes, he is. Okay. There you go. It's it's very seldom. That it was not like when it first came out. Where one, I think know. yeah, I think after uh, Spider Man, uh, what was it? Ultimate Carnage or whatever that Venom set was. Carnage, Venom yeah. Carnage. I think after that set, uh, they're like, let's they tone back the autonomous back a little because yeah, we did see a ton of it and then just like almost none immediately after. Let's see here, autonomous. Autonomous figures, uh, let's see. Oh, I guess uh, Robot Ants. Robot Ants Ant forever has it. Robot Ant had oh, okay. it. Stranded Mutant, Flame Construct, mm. and the bystander that Nimrod okay, defined. Okay, so a handful of, handful of bystanders. There's yeah, been a couple. Mostly bystanders, I guess. They have not given it to a printed piece in Spider Man, though, when it debuted. Yeah. yeah. Which is honestly. Kind of fair. Probably a good thing. I didn't debut in that, but it was the first time they used it for The last years. thing in this prize kit is probably one of the more exciting ones. We have the Search for Amit tomb, Amit's Tomb, which is the uh, mystery card. Once again, not, the mis not a mystery card, but a clue card. Uh, so it's got a clue effect where basically once you break blocking multiple pieces or a singular piece in an action, you get a token. And then it triggers on four, six, and eight. The four, it allows you to heal one click after you KO an opposing character. The six, it increases your damage by one if the character you're targeting is occupying or adjacent to debris, which is crazy good. And then the case closed is eight. When a friendly character KOs an opposing character, score 10 points. The Dang. most interesting part of this card by far, though, is the keywords it triggers off of. Detective, that's standard, but mystical as well. Yeah. So you want to hop into Silver Age with your tri -Sentinels. tri sentinels Yeah. Yeah, they'll get this guy running up quick. So it's a great way to heal. It's a great way to boost your damage up because creating debris is so easy. And scoring additional points. I mean, this to me, I look at this clue card and I think it, it may be one of the best ones Does out Wrecker there. Does Wrecker have mystical? I don't think no. he does. Uh, uh, no. Ah, uh, it sucks. He does have detective, though. No, just kidding. Oh. Um, no, it is, it's insanely easy to pop it off. It's probably one of the easiest to pop off in a certain build because... Yeah, like, breaking, blocking, making blocking, yeah, destroying blocking. You can do it so easily. Like, I hate to just say, like, tri-sentinel, tri-sentinel, but they they can do it as a free action with their sidestep. They just And being able to and stop in blocking now. And they doing like, it, too. Like, yeah, oh my gosh. I feel like it's definitely one of the easier mystery cards we've seen to get all the way up. I don't want to get too crazy into the Fantastic Four OP kit, but I will just say really quickly, Mr. Fantastic has a really fun attack power, so gives him range I love four. this it's guy. It's a power action, so it's called Get Over Here for get Round, over here. <laughs> and round and that's, 2. And that's exactly how it plays which is yeah. awesome so he makes a ranged combat attack with full range after resolutions you place the hit character adjacent to mr fantastic and then you make a close attack targeting that character which is just hilarious so yeah uh he has no sidestep to use with it which is a little rough since it's a power action to make this thing happen but it's such a fun flavorful ability i, really I mean like it the plasticity to lock him down that's is really true cool, yeah but it's like stretching out getting close punch him i think we have to talk about him a little bit though because i do think this damage power opens up a lot of opportunity you have outwit outwit as power when Mr. Fantastic uses Outwit his power, after resolutions, another friendly character may make a close attack targeting the chosen character, if able. Yeah. So, you can trigger another attack with somebody who's already acted, maybe mm, cap on a Pegasus for another straight through your defense attack, yeah. something like that. That's pretty good, that's pretty good. Also, you can use Outwit as a free action, and then Outwit again as a power action. So this is a double Outwit, and it lets another teammate act. He's only 50 points, I don't think he's like peak of the game. But this is a figure that 
like when I saw, I was just immediately thinking, like, okay, what can you abuse this with? There's oh, some I really, really there. like him. Right. This Anything is my favorite that... Mr. Fantastic probably ever that they've made. Anything that can, like, <laughs> so trigger cool. another character atta to attack is just got to be something that you keep in mind and look at because, oh, yeah. like, yes, he does have vampire to give him a power action to do it. Oh, yeah. But, you know, things like that. The other character could have been, like, carried or they could have just done, like, a full speed move, like, whatever. Like, it, it doesn't necessarily lend itself to a drop-off team because he has to be given the power action, but yep. if he's already in position and he's already outwitting, that's, like, good. Outwit twice, good. Mm -hmm. Free attack for somebody that, like, does more damage than him, real good. Real good. Like, <laughs> all, all good. Uh, but, yeah, also just the flavorful, like, stretch out, grab him. So cool. Yeah. He really, yeah. And in, they're in their, like, original costumes as well, which is fun. Uh, Human Torch, just know he's bad. Very this... overcosted. His dial doesn't synergize with itself. No, it his trait well, his dial's works. fine. It's the two powers. His, that his powers don't synergize. Don't synergize. His, his dial is barely passable. <laughs> oh I mean, gosh. The, it's the roughest part for me is the ninety points with a seventeen toughness. I don't get yeah. how he's ninety points. I really don't understand yeah. that point value. But we don't need to jump super deep into him. Just know that when you're he looking does, at him, no, he doesn't make sense. He with uh, hypersonic. He can choose to not make an attack and just deal one damage. Not one pen damage, but just one. And then he has poison, which Simeon, do you want to inform us? So he can choose to not attack and deal yeah. three damage. Do you want to let us know what his, uh, what his trait triggers so off of? The reason why he doesn't synergize with himself is that special power lets him hypersonic and then choose not to attack and just deal one damage. But then his trait activates when he hits so if you choose not to attack you can't hit so you get flare tokens if you hit and then if you remove three flare tokens uh you get to deal two unavoidable damage which is awesome but again his speed power top dial doesn't help him do anything other than i mean it's hypersonic but it doesn't help him in the essence that it just removes the ability to hit <laughs> a little silly for the, for the cool part of it it does it's like you know instead of like, if you hit, instead of doing normal damage, instead of an effect like that, it's instead of attacking. Which is what you want to do. Which is do. what you need to do Although, to get flare tokens. He's yeah. going Nova is really cool, because it's once you remove his three flare oh, tokens, I mean, you cool. deal two unavoidable damage, destroy all this blocking. And he, I mean, he has a 12 for 4 with uh, really five range neat, hypersonics. But, so uh, no, thank just, you. Yeah, it doesn't work. Infinity thing is really cool. It's a very unique way to design a dial, albeit... Not the world's greatest. No, no, he's no. not. He's got a rally four, and he starts the game on a click two. So it's a weird wild dial. It's not a vampire. It's a wild dial, truly. Uh, he's also unique. Uh, so you remove four of his rally dice. So once you get four fours, you turn him to click one. Click one gets him now is the time of the clobbering. It gives him flight. It gives him <laughs> pulse wave. And when he uses pulse wave, front of the characters have safeguard pulse wave. Uh, so he's got a little running shot. He's a 12 for 4 pulse wave on that click, which is really neat with running shot, 19 defense. And then his defense power that's not invincible, which is on his top click, the rest of the dial is a stock click, and he can't be chosen for mastermind, and he can't be healed except by the Fantastic Four team ability. And his power cause or cosmic energy the entire time. It's really neat. I want to try to mess around with it. It's not necessarily good. But it's very unique where you could free remove them, run up, pulse wave, and then yeah. they would probably just hit you next turn to get you back off of your top click to your little one damage in cap <laughs> kind of sad sidesteppy clicks. That but sums it up pretty well. But it's just neat. like I want to yeah. try them out because it's neat, but I I don't have expectations for him. Well, I think the thing is like you can kind of ignore him, but the problem is. Uh, green rally like is right it just pops up it pops up on your return it pops up on your opponent's turn and it's a rally four so i think that it's fairly easy to get four of them but yeah they can they can knock him down to like click four or five and he's not doing anything at that point he doesn't have prob anymore he's maybe in capping maybe sidestepping but they can mostly ignore him uh it's really just if you get lucky and you can pop him off early he is like a piece that like now they have to deal with at least deal one damage or you know precision strike or something to get could, him off of click could one. Could he have been like sixty points? I just I look at seventy and I, I just like, go. I, I just think seventy I feel like is like too much to make him really unkillable though. With four stop clicks and then maybe he gets a rally. But not it's literally just stop. It is. Yeah. You can just go up. You can and poison. You can equip him with like the poison stones him, or flurry him, Harrow. Beat him. Harrow could give. Now him he's at eighty points though. Harrow. Could, oh yeah. Harrow yeah. could give him. A so there I don't think that he needed to be lower points. I think that they didn't need to put he can't be chosen for mastermind. I think if sure. he was able to be chosen for mastermind, needs, it would have been fine. He needs something else, yeah. Like, I, 
I also, think he's really interesting, but it does feel just really weird that the enough. thing doesn't reduce damage. Like he can be poisoned, yeah, and like you until know, he becomes clobbered. It feels Super really weird that like Kingpin Prime can reduce pen damage with impervious, and Cosmic Infinity Thing <laughs> has no reducer for four clicks. Like yes, they're stop clicks, but I know in like the comic that this is based around for like five issues of it, he's literally just he floating in anything, the sky, yeah. and they're like, "What's he up to?" Oh, he's just chilling. Yeah. yeah, and that's like that's pretty much it. He's like, "Yeah, I'm chilling." I like that. Uh, <laughs> after the Avengers Forever set gave us three characters from that storyline, we're getting another yeah, character from it. That's cool. So we're starting to fill out the Avengers Forever. This is probably the best part about the Fantastic Four thing, though. We get a legacy card from Invisible Woman, and all of us were thinking, oh, who's it going to be? They already did Captain America, so who's this one going to be? Nope. They just made the Captain America Invisible Woman again as a legacy d card. D double legacy card. Which is... Bonus activated. Sometimes you would be like, oh, that's dumb. Why would they waste it? They should have used it. But to me, this is like, wait a second. So you're saying there's a chance that we get an even, like, a better version of the Hammer of Thor Captain America Legacy? That's all I see don't, this as. Don't give me that hope. I, but that's the hope don't I have. do that to me. <laughs> we could maybe get a truly, like, meta, really, really, really good Hammer of Thor Captain America Legacy. Please, please, please. please. We're begging you. If you hear this. Please, <laughs> please, please redo please, Hammer of Thor Cap and give cool. him the legacy he deserves. This does bring up, like, an interesting topic, though. Like, doubling down on a legacy because, as you know, like... Legacy cards will rotate they will. with the set that they came out with, so that does like lead to like the question: Will they double down on like others? Like you know, once things rotate, will they revisit like you know in a distant future or... when you have an entire binder of cards yeah. for one figure? But it also it's also <laughs> like a good. I mean, I don't know if it's a good practice to like re legacy a card. Well, and this one's even weirder because her card is still modern. But it, is. it would be interesting if, you know, you went out of your way to collect this legacy figure and it's got, like, a more likely chance of getting re legacied than, like, a new one. Yeah. I don't know if I want that or if I want them to, like, go through, like, all the garbage, all the things that haven't been legacied. There's plenty of, like, really I good would rather, stuff. I would rather have them make more characters that never were legacied. I see what you mean. Specifically in remake. this situation, I, I don't agree think there's that. a better invisible woman die or sculpt there's probably no. a better dial but i don't know if there's a better invisible woman sculpt but there's other ones i think it would have been really funny if they did the puck invisible woman where there's no sculpt at yeah. all that would have been really funny that well what what uh, makes this one acceptable to me is that because of her trait the shields up yeah. which is power if no friendly character has a shield token give a friendly character within range and line of fire a shield token when the friendly character with invisible woman shield token would take damage from an attack instead remove the shield token and deal that character one unavoidable damage what i like about this is that you can pop that shield token off of her Which and put so it sick. on the card of the figure. Yeah, so really to me, cool. that makes it like... I don't like the concept of double legacy cards. So now though. I want them to make... That's, uh, that's a little scary. You know, remake everybody that has a removable effect. A.K.A. Weapon X and Ice Captain America, please. Even though they don't really hand theirs out, they just <laughs> remove them to finally do stuff. We've also got, I mean, we've got a ton of them. There's a... Uh, there's a Magneto. There's a I, human I really torch. like the black heart with the little demon. I really oh, like... Yeah. Oh, he was fun. He Squirrel was girl with tippy toe. The, the best. Monkey Joe. Yeah. Monkey Joe. Yeah, Monkey Joe, Joe. yeah. Yeah, because he... Yeah. The original Monkey, MJ. Monkey Joe, Joe from HC Realms has the uh, running tally of how many times that bystander's <laughs> KO'd someone. Picked up Mjolnir and stuff, yeah. too. It's so um, ridiculous. Michael What's Joden. the other one? Lobo from... Or Red Wolf that spits <laughs> That's off good the Lobo. Is. I love that one. From a yeah, dude. I would love that for Legacy. Oh, my gosh. That was one of my favorites. I love... I mean, obviously, bystander generation's awesome. When Best. it's a physical representation of the bystander. Even, even cooler. better. Yeah. But... No, I, I do love sculpts that are quote unquote interactive. <laughs> like, yeah, for dude. whatever reason, it just adds that little bit of cool. I like it, and she's a she's a power action. Here's a time platform. Power action. Here's a time platform. Kinda, which kinda, is really good. Yeah. So. yeah, I mean, well, like th my biggest issue with her trait is that uh, it's when they would take damage from an attack, you instead remove it, so it's not optional. Yeah. So oh, you're right. That is it rough. will force your opponent to like you know take their actions maybe in like a different order than they would but there's a lot of situations where you're probably chipping somebody for one or two before you're hitting them for five yeah, yeah. send so, a precision strike piece after you instead yeah. of my big hitter it's gonna it's gonna require some real precise building really specific figures so i think make it pop you also get some tk and prob with her at 50 and then she has a couple specials she has like precision strike telekinesis later in dial and then shape change that allows her to place up to two squares away you're not paying the points for her on that. You know, it's TK prob top dial. She has only toughness with 18. So when she gets cracked, like, 
you know, there you go. You can have those powers. But for the most part, uh, I don't know. I think it's a really cool effect. I don't know how practical it is. But what I do want to say is regardless of, like, how I feel about all the figures in this set, I said this in the video, they nailed the flavor of the Fantastic Four expertly with every single figure in this set. All of them feel very unique. Yeah. All of them feel very true to their character. And they all just do really, really cool things, whether they're, you know, meta-defining or not. They're all really They fun. are unique, and they're very in their cool own right. abilities, which is really nice. All right. I still want and a, like, Green last, Lantern construct kind of invisible woman. Certainly not just, least. Oh, that would be like, cool. Like platforms, bubble. No, she, like, quite literally can, like, use her force fields to, like, bisect things and, like, just like she cuts this Saw submarine blade. into I mean it's like that except she doesn't have to make it it just like happens because she just thinks like force field here and then like the submarine just splits in I half want, I want her that, that does the, she's uh, insanely powerful in the comics turns your like retinas invisible or whatever makes yeah. you blind or something like that whatever she does now that's that's hardcore yeah, yeah. right <laughs> like, now they can't draw a line of fire to anybody like the all star superman that's like I did brain surgery on you without your permission while you were looking at what? me what yeah a lobotomy superman yeah, yeah. If he does uh, I can't I think it's all star superman that uh, movie or whatever animated show it's not an animated show it must oh, be an animated that... movie where he fights the not uh Red Sun? no no oh, jeez well, Red Sun from Red, Red Sun Sun. also does it but yeah. uh no this is uh he's fighting like Manchester Black I think oh and Dude uh, in a jacket with telekinesis TK powers yeah. yeah it's i'll show you the scene Formidable. later okay. but yeah it's <laughs> very much so we gotta shut him down he's none other than the finest villain the oh yeah justice league international had to deal with very cool uh but all right this is kind of nifty news this is still not guaranteed yet these are dates for onslaught for onslaught okay it says yep. it says onslaught but also, we know WizKids is going to be at all these places anyways. And so they say Gen Con uh, dates. Indianapolis, Indiana, 8-3 through 8-6. Why would they not be there the whole weekend doing Hero Clicks as well, right? It also so, just says, like, tournament next to that. It does just that. straight say tournament, but it doesn't say Hero Clicks. It doesn't bothers. say Hero Clicks tournament. It doesn't no, bother me. It's an onslaught tournament but again, for sure. But this shows yeah. that WizKids is going to be at these places at these times. It says it's for onslaught. It doesn't say hero clicks, but why would it also not be hero? You know what I mean? It's like if they're going to Gen Con, I think we can guarantee yeah. Yeah. Nationals is also happening. Why would you not sell your hottest it's item? Exactly. Like things that have quite literally and shut down the convention it says, hall. Wiz yeah. Kids World Championships, Memphis, Tennessee, 915, 917. So that's the dates more than likely. I would say 99 or 98% sure that 915 through 917 is the Hero Host World Championship as long as the Onslaught Championship Tournament as well. It'd be incredibly weird if they like doubled, it would be insane. doubled down on going to Memphis twice in like the same month that they've held Worlds previously. <laughs> so it'd be super weird if like Hero Clicks wasn't that weekend. But yeah, it would be it was so, so so weird, especially if it was. It literally says Wiz Kids World Championships. Yeah, There's a world championship the... for Onslaught already, and next to that it says tournament. Yeah, yeah. so it's definitely the. Where are the Onslaught can, tournaments? Can Show them to me. Assume. <laughs> I uh, look at the one Onslaught Facebook group they have, and there's only like 200 people in it, which is really funny. Mm, okay. Yeah, so it's, it, maybe it'll get growing here soon. It I mean, it, it looks pretty cool, It's a brand new game still. It's like, That's why I'm saying a world championship, a world championship for a game, game that, like, soon. yeah, you know, has just come out. I It has um, to be. like It's almost like there's the, another reason be. they'll be in Memphis. Here's the silly thing <laughs> about the it. Memphis dates, though. It's only 9, 15 through 17, which is only three days. No Thursday, no Thursday night I, happenings. You know what I mean? See, no that's why that's why I think this is onslaught specific, and and not when they announce when they're also yeah doing hero when they announce stuff, hero clicks, it'll be, be nine fourteen to nine seventeen. That'd be nice. That's my guess, but obviously, mm, no. I didn't think about that. That so that's why I'm like onslaught specifically is going to be nine fifteen to nine seventeen because why would they run it on Thursday? But I think yeah, Thursday will be a hero clicks day. Another thing I'm really curious Friday, about whatever Gen Con we know is nationals from last year. Memphis, we know, is Worlds. PAX Unplugged also says tournaments, which may just be Onslaught saying there's an Onslaught tournament. Yeah. No but dates what there either. Of, there are no dates just either. Just December. I assume because they don't know PAX themselves doesn't have their dates. Oh, more, sure, than, sure. more than likely, right? Yeah. Um, so then what tournament is happening for maybe Hero Clicks? Or maybe it's just Onslaught? But I would like to know what kind of tournament is happening during PAX. Is that now a third major like WizKids Hero Clicks tournament to go to this year? I don't know. Maybe. It's also like hard to say what an onslaught tournament looks like, how how involved that is, or if that's something yeah. that they can just 
kind of like Let freely it, run. Let it happen. But obviously, like Onslaught's a new flagship that they're trying to push, so they might be doing more stuff for that than they it are for Hero Clicks. But I, I and that might just be a lot easier to run a Onslaught yeah. tournament than a Hero Clicks tournament because you don't need like an official judge for it. I don't know. I like your theory though that this is specifically Onslaught. But, but it will is. be in tandem with Worlds, and then we will get the official, like, Hero Clicks Worlds dates, which, you know, presumably would be the 14th through the 17th. I think you're on yeah. the money with that, Simeon. I hope so. I think it'd be really weird if they killed the Thursday night. <laughs> yeah, it'd be a bummer. I like that. Yeah. I mean, everyone just, like, especially the people who drove rolling in like zombies, just being like, we're here. Yeah. <laughs> that was what's, hilarious. What's, uh, what's up? It's like, I've gotten like four hours of sleep. Let's play clicks for eight hours. Go. And that is all the news we have this week, ladies and gentlemen. So let us know. Yeah, we'll go ahead. We're going to go ahead and jump into some listener questions here really quickly. There are dozens of us. Dozens! If you want to ask us a listener question, you can do so by sending us an email at dialhforheroclicks at gmail.com or messaging us on Facebook or Twitter with a question. These all come from our Discord, which is Patreon exclusive. If you want to join it, it's a $5 tier. Gets you access to behind the scenes videos, podcasts, early look at videos on our YouTube channel, uh, as well as playing Bad Samaritan and a lot of giveaways and other cool stuff. And of course, our Discord server, which is always popping in off. So we got a couple of listener questions here. Let's go ahead and jump into this one from, where is it at here? Tyler M. He asks, with another Hanna-Barbera character on the way in the form of Khan Ali Joker, who do you think will be the next character we'll get Scooby-Doo Monsters in Notorious? I hope we get Scooby-Doo Monsters in Notorious. That'd be awesome. Get the Scooby gang in Batman Team Up, and then in the, the villain set, we get the monsters. Little Minor 49er, little uh, nightly night 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 guy. I don't know. He's that kind of space funny. clown thing scared oh, me that was as a terrifying. child. Yeah, it's weird that you said Hanna-Barbera in the form of Joker and not the one that we have the dial for. <laughs> the space ghost. Oh, well, you're right. Also that one. I was thinking of the, the Joker because he was in the yeah. Scooby-Doo bit. No, um, I didn't watch a ton of stuff outside of Scooby-Doo proper. Um, I don't think that they'll do like a generic Scooby-Doo set. Like, or not generic no. Scooby-Doo, but like a Scooby-Doo on its own. I think they only have access to Hanna-Barbera through DC crossover stuff, but I don't honestly know. So, But yeah. I, I mean, I loved Undead. If you got like some sort of mechanic where like all these monsters had like a shape change and they could like have a double identity sort of thing with like... Theme oh, that park owner. <laughs> if yeah, if it was like a old, reverse alter old ego, man, uh, whatever <laughs> Jenkins. Yeah, if they could just like have a switch thing where they go back and forth That'd between be being an actual monster and just like a weird greedy man who's burning down the trailer park. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I yeah. think my uh, my goofy answer would be give me a Harlem Globetrotters team base. I've said it before. It'd be oh, hilarious. Yeah. Uh, but my more serious answer, and once again, like. I I don't know how possible this would be. I would love, absolutely love to see a Harvey Birdman. I think I've also said that. I loved that show. I actually rewatched it pretty recently, and yeah, I just like his costume. I think the show is hilarious. There's a lot of directions directions you could go with that. So, but honestly, I I don't know. I think I think you guys kind of nailed it. Where it's like, what really do they have access to? Yeah. I'm not sure. So Harvey Birdman's my pick. And yeah, Scooby Doo Monsters and Notorious. I, I'm indifferent about that. Sure, I'd be cool with yeah, it. Yeah, be I'm, fine. I wouldn't hate it, but I know a lot of people are like. Oh, I just want full DC. Don't be giving us DC plus Titans plus Scooby Doo plus whatever. Who knows? People will complain on anything though. But I I would like it. Bill asks, how would you feel about WizKids releasing Purple Ring LEs? They would be able to make more comic accurate versions of characters and not worry about balancing them. For instance, a 1200 point re-sculpt of Guy Emperor Doom, illegal for official play, but a fun boss battle with your friends. Well, Bill, if it's 1200 points, they don't have to worry about yeah. balancing it anyways, because no one's going to play that in 300 <laughs> Modern if it's 1200 points. Sorry, I'm not trying to sound rude here, Bill, but like... Simeon I, went in on this last night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went into, like, uh, how if, if a character... And I, I, don't, I think Bill has more to his point than, like, that instance that he sure. shared. But, yeah, if they are making uh, specifically something that's over 300 points on dial, like, especially anything 500 and over, because I, I think there's some 400-point tournaments, but nothing officially recognized by WizKids happens that's over 300, to my knowledge. And so... You literally don't have to worry about balancing. You could make stuff that's insanely broken at those higher point values. And you could have a smaller point value in there and just have like their traits or whatever only active for the higher one. We've seen that before. Um, 
But as far as like reintroducing purple rings, I don't like that. No, there's no need for that. I yeah, I think. I mean, I it wouldn't get, really matter if the no, figures are if, high if points. No, they can't be played no. in three hundred. They kind of a purple ring anyways for <laughs> yeah. a lot of places. So, so I mean, it, it's a bit redundant. But like, let's it say is. he's talking about like a an unerratted two by two apocalypse. Like, let's say that was a convention exclusive, and they purple ringed him without the errata, and he was like, "I can mastermind." My bystanders don't have point cost to them, blah, blah, blah. So you can't play it at Worlds, but you can still have, like, this big thematic boss battle against, like, some people with yeah. X-Men or whatever you want to do. I yeah, you see... don't really need the purple ring for that, if you Yeah, know. I can see, like, the case being made for it, but I just don't like the idea of some figures not being able to be used in all situations. That's fair. Yeah, I'm all yeah. for making more comic-accurate dials. Like I said earlier, I think they're kind of cranking out pretty comic-accurate dials right now, which is good, without purple rings. So... We'll see. Bill then asked, picking back off his own question, what purple ring figure do you want to see? I don't want to see a single purple ring figure. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to see Stan Under the Lee. guise of his question. Under, under the guise of a really cool comic accurate character coming out, I would love to see a uh, pink and red lantern Guy Gardner that saves the uh, the cores when he's going between so full of rage but so full of love that he loves all of his friends and all the lantern core, but he hates his own rage so much that he's able to dual wield love and hate. Uh, I love that. I'd love to see a super comic accurate version of that figure. That's a great name for each fist yeah meet love meet hate yeah. <laughs> bang bang yeah. i'd like to see a living tribunal that uh was actually like scary to face off against because the yeah. one that they were like the 1300 point line on the one that we got was just like so mediocre it was like yeah he yeah. had a longish dial but like again like a lot of those things that have done this rant ad nauseum throughout the years but most 300 point modern teams can take down like the big bad like the galactus at full dial the living tribunal at full dial i know like, when kobik was like a meta piece i was like you can literally use a 300 point modern kobik team to take out 750 point galactus and that's silly or a 50 point black leopard <laughs> yeah 50 yeah, point black leopard terrible. yeah they they need the old sheets that uh, like dr manhattan stuff had where it's like all these like lists of rules yeah. when you're playing this like can't have combat values reduced can't be countered can't be ignored can't like all this like random stuff and like yeah you can just house rule it which i guess is the best way to but we uh you know well first to answer bill's question in the light of like you know what big bad guy would i want for like a boss fight figure i'd love like a two by two parallax yeah that just has a super long dial you know can do a bunch of attacks the, is immune like to a bunch of stuff movie yeah yeah, yeah, of yeah, course. Big, smoke. Far, <laughs> big Far Cloud Parallax. Was it 2013? Uh, it's like no, 2009. 2009. Yeah, it, it yeah, was a while ago. ago. But uh, what I did want to say... It came out That's all I know. Uh, you know, back in the day, like around the cusp of like when special powers were really starting to get stronger, like me and my buddies would play uh, against like the Galactus, the Spectre, and they did have that big sheet of rules. You know, they couldn't be psychic blasted, mind controlled, yada, yada, yada. And then there were figures like... Uh, one of the favorites to play against Galactus, because he immediately gets to make an attack against you after you attack. One of the favorites was Chaos War Wolverine, who when he attacked, he could copy the printed damage of who he was attacking. Oh, gosh. So he could hit oh, wow. Galactus or Spectre for like eight or nine damage and then just get vaporized by him. Yeah. But those uh those scenarios were a ton of fun. So if they brought back like sheets like that and like really like you know, make like something like cosmic multi attack again, like with the original Galactus where you could act three times. Give us some crazy you stuff have like to that. Have something like that yeah. because the action economy of a modern 300 point team, and this has been the same way for like four years now with all these cheap, like 50 point figures that have good stats. It's pushing towards like 30 now. The action too. economy for like one big bad is awful. Mm -hmm. You have like one thing you can do. And so. They got to heal insane, an insane amount. And they got to be able to do a ton of free stuff. Yeah. And, like, seriously, if it's for home games, like, make them OP. The people who are playing them can always, like, adjust them lower. But, honestly, like, I know it would be super fun to, like, film a video of us playing against, like, Galactus if it was a challenge. If it was today. actually challenging. And it, how cool would it a be if, the, if, like, the starter box <laughs> that somebody grabs for their first thing, if it was, like, the starter was, like, defeat Galactus. And it was, oh. like... That'd be awesome. Yeah, it's like the fantastic, what was it, Cosmic Clash, but then it also yeah. has Galactus in it. Sick. And then, you know, he's got this, you know, 1400 point dial or something. The, the movie Galactus, like, right, Simeon? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the movie, the movie, the other Doom, cloud. The movie Doom and uh, Johnny Storm, where Johnny Storm oh, becomes God. Super Scroll. That's my old, favorite that Johnny was Storm. So epic, dude. Old Staple Face Doom. <laughs> <laughs> Staple Face Doom, yeah. 
Man, uh, yeah, I think that's a great idea to have starter kits with like a boss fight in so them. I, I would buy those. those. Uh, I'd, I'd love Hasbro them. Hasbro used to do the Marvel Universe wave. You know this to me. You collected those. Yeah. Like Galactus came with like a Silver Surfer or like a Sentinel came with like Wolverine. Same thing. You would get one really big figure, a bunch of small figures, boss battle. That'd be really sick. I like that. You get, a, you get Goliath and Ragnarok Thor. Recreate the famous scene yeah, from Civil I War mean, where they just murder Goliath. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> uh, but, clone, all right. Clone of Thor. Yeah. Evil oh, this robot. was a robot oh, god of thunder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Luke, Luke, Luke asks, we all know who Heroclix's inner circle is, do we? Yeah, do we? it's uh, Ares and Joe Pengrazzo. Oh, of course, that's right. The inner circle uh, works. But who would yes. you cast as Heroclix's outer circle? Ooh. I don't even know. Wouldn't that literally just be anyone that's anyone not on the inner circle? Anyone else not in the inner circle. Is there like a... Although a brim to the circle there are people exist. If you guys, I know no one else has read mm. this year, but the current Captain America run, there's the people who are called the Outer Circle. Oh. And they're like, we make everything on the inside happen. And I'm like, shut up. But that is their whole thing, is that they're playing a century game and they're controlling all the pieces on the other circles. Their logo is Captain America Shield. They're on the Outer Circle. The stands, the mm. grandstands. And then oh, everything they stand inside... For yeah, no, they don't. Stands. No, it's really <laughs> weird. Uh, it's a very strange Captain America run. It's really good, but they're that they're the outer circle who is actually secretly playing this game. They've made all the moves like a game of chess, basically. Someone was like, "Yeah, bomb Guam," and then that was their move for that turn or whatever. You know, it would be something like that. <laughs> Do all their moves have to rhyme? No, I don't bomb, know why that was the only yeah. country I could think of. My biggest weakness: attack Iraq. <laughs> attack Iraq. <laughs> attack Iraq. Yeah. Bomb Guam. <laughs> Uh, I think uh, the real outer circle are the people who haven't found Facebook groups yet. I was going to say. Or the people who are consistently posting in HT Realms. Pick your boys in there. The (laughs) the outer circle are either people that, like, quit the game but still comment on it, which there's plenty of. Or it's the people that have never found out that there's, like, an online Heroclix community and they just play, like, kitchen tabletop and... Never really truly learns the people rules. That live under a rock. Yeah, Those that people, sounds like yeah. a nice circle to be in. It's sometimes be the best. some days <laughs> where you just make things up as you go. Yeah. You're like, how does this work? And you're like, ah, oh, I don't know. There's definitely no like Facebook group that you could check rules or anything. So let's just make something up about how it works. <laughs> okay, yeah, truly. And, like that's just how they play. Uh, yeah. The next question we have is from Bill. He asks, "What is the worst figure in a set that the set is named after?" His exhibit is zero forty six thing. From I know this time, one. Who's just terrible garbage. There's a worse one. There's got to be. It has to be a worse Harley one. Quinn common in the Harley Quinn and the Gotham Girls is so bad. Like, she does, like, nothing. Uh, she has, like, pretty much a blank dial with, like, shape change. And, like, this is what your set's supposed to be based around? Like, they didn't even bother to try and make her interesting. Oh, sure. Yeah. I just, uh, I don't. Oh gosh! Willpower, willpower, shape change, and uh, this one is, damage. This is nine at attack. Least, this is a thrill killer, Harley. Though, right? I guess she is number one, though. Zero zero yeah. one. Is this is the, the set title, it's based off set. of. Oh yeah. Oof. And honestly, if Wonder Woman eighty was named Batman or Superman, actually just Batman. Batman. Who's Batman? That Batman with side step yeah. smoke cloud. I just have to throw him under the bus. I hate that Batman wow. so much. I know it's That's not about fair. a. It's not about that. But yeah, Harley Quinn from Harley Quinn and the Gotham Girls is 100% my pick. That thing back in the day wasn't that bad. It wasn't great. The 8 attack, no moving attack, Quake. 8 attack or back in that has, era was uh, like 10 today. Oh, okay. I'm going to go, I'm gonna go with the, the Hulk cha- the Hulked out heroes chases from the Incredible Hulk oh, set. Oh, man, yeah. Uh, they were... I don't even know if they were close to being good or even like reasonable. With Wolver Harley's. Age was... Was like the one that was like maybe. Yeah, he's he's so cool looking, but he uh, is. just it, Wolver Rage reminds me how much I hate Weapon H. Gosh, <laughs> what a terrible character design. He has adamantium claws when he's like normal. Also, he has zero difficulty like switching back and forth between Hulk and himself. That's people got lame. mad that like in She Hulk Gen like the She Hulk series, people got mad that Jen Walters is like has an easier time with it. And I'm like, you guys don't even read comics because literally one of the worst characters going on right now learned how to do that in like days and he just does it like it's a light switch, like constantly. In one panel he'll be man, the next panel Hulk, then back to man, then back to Hulk. Like it's you would literally the, so fast and just like effortless. Like the level of Wolverine he has in him yeah. would prevent him from you being able think- to just and then also the worst part, he has 
literally an adamantium like skeleton or adamantium claws and then when he grows into like giant somehow they grow with him and i'm like how does gamma affect adamantium like how does he have giant adamantium claws but also human-sized adamantium do hulk's claws? bones grow they well, Hulk does, like, yeah. It would have to, yeah, like a little itty bitty banner bones. But wouldn't there. the yeah. adamantium, like if the adamantium's encasing the bone, it's wouldn't like, it not the, be able uh, to grow or something? It's the same problem know. with like uh, Bucky and his Hulked out hero. Maybe it's like, like, why would his metal particles. arm get there? Yeah. That doesn't make any sense, you know? It really like, doesn't. There's a little, there's, yeah. I'm, I'm going to say it's Pym Tech, like Speed Force. It's, there you go. I mean, it's, you I can be, nothing. It's Pym be just like the Marvel Universe. Yeah. Yo, how did yeah. this happen? Oh, oh science. Pym uh, particles. Pym particles. Oh, oh. Cosmic yeah. rays. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Gamma yeah. radiation. What's wrong with her? Uh, ah, my particles. my pick is going to be from <laughs> Joker's Wild, the 001 Joker. Yeah, uh, he sucks. 45 points, sidestep, mastermind. Joker's Wild is an easy set to pick on because it was a terrible set. Uh, but he's just bad. He's just real bad. Yep. Not not a crazy answer. Just he's bad. Thank you, Bill. We appreciate That's that. That's a good question. Question. Matt Reed says 200 point Hulk or 175 point Speak of the Devil Weapon H with Mad Jim <laughs> at 35. <laughs> Fill in the rest of my team for Silver Game in Huntsville. <laughs> so for the 200 point Hulk team, I'll give you 75 point Soldier Supreme and 25 point Galactus on Soldier Supreme. That'll fill that team out. You're welcome, Matt. Anybody else want to try to fill out his team here? Uh, oh, honestly, you can never go wrong with Flash at 30 and then Chip at 35. Yeah. You can carry those guys around. And Did then... you say Galactus on Weapon H? I said Galactus on Soul oh, Supreme. Because he also then... just, the Weapon H also just needs it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Well, he can't have Galactus because he's more than half the build total. Oh, that's yeah, right. he's 175. Or is he 90? He's 175. Uh, he, he, he has a oh, lower dial that's like four clicks. Yeah, that's yeah. But I think he, Matt Reed wants to play him at 175, though. But yeah, I think uh, if you just get him a taxi and then some support powers that can benefit from Hulk's trait, that'd be the route I'd go. Not sure exactly what that is, but think, Flash Chip's a great start. I think the main thing is if you're running like a big one-man army right now, you want something cheap that Enjoy getting stop easy. signed. Yeah, something yeah. cheap and that's either doesn't die easy or multiples of this like kind of thing. That can destroy blocking. Like, yeah. Preferably with like some sort of like movement or like well, some even sort destroy of blocking against the stop sign. I mean, this is a totally different point. Super strength. Oh, that's right. You can't move through. Super it strength lets you pick sign. up the barriers though, so he can get around it a little bit. Yeah. But if he's already holding something, you can just encase him and bye. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, that's my that's my only <laughs> uh, take on running like big point costed figures yeah. like that it doesn't matter because matt chose to change his team he did i he will did. reveal his secret now oh no it's redacted redacted tyler Mirren goes on to ask another question here after listening to the scott porter talk to the scott porter talk about maps that he designed when can we expect the dial h line of neoprene maps i would love to do that that would be so fun what would be what would be the Simeon map that gets made? Simeon, oh gosh. the uh, billion clicks mansion. I did. That think, would be so awesome. You know, I, I did think like back when I was playing it, when I was able to play Thursday nights, uh, I did think how cool it would be for like Krypton to get like a a map just because like the comic rows, the action figure rows, oh, the way sure. it's like built. Like there's a big gaming area in the back with only like two entrances. And then the rest of it's just, like, shelves and, like, stuff like that. So I was like, ah, oh, comic store to make, like, a great map. And it's about the right size and stuff. I thought yeah, that'd great be really for cool. the smaller size map. Yeah. A comic show. Oh, yeah, a little square. That's the only time I've thought about, like, making a map. Um, man, I could make one of, like, the, the like my shop at work. But, like, that'd be pretty just open and boring. Why are there these skid marks that look awfully <laughs> familiar? <laughs> To a certain These are car. strangely priest sized skid marks in this shop. <laughs> It'd be great if you had a billboard on that map that went from like elevation one to like elevation eight, and that was the only <laughs> elevation on it. Leo. Yeah. It's like special orange. It's like, a, it's, it's like, like a one by four, and you can, like, there's two entrances on both sides. Like, in the middle of the map, people go up there and fight. <laughs> I wanted to say uh, only character. It has no transition squares. It just says, like, only characters who can use soaring may, like, oh, gosh. Oh, be soaring. On this. Soaring. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh. Oh, man. I think, uh, I think a cool one would be, like, uh, a map that has like a filming studio from Calder's apartment in Vermilion, oh, the one from sure. Omaha, and That'd the one cool. from Sioux Falls. Yeah, and All then three of those and a long map. That yeah, yeah. Well, I think that'd be cool. So like three separate like shooting areas. This would definitely be an indoor one. Yeah, of just the various places we've shot. 
uh, like maybe like a little editing hideout, and then some you know just different the fun X-Men stuff. Arcade cabinet room. <laughs> yeah, of course that would that's a must. That would um, be I like that. I think like another part of the map being like black and white for like Wanda Simeon would be cool. <sighs> And then uh, we'd have to have, like, an elevator with some, like, blood outside of oh, it yeah. for the time Calder America beat up Calder America. So <laughs> He beat up Calder Hydra. Or Calder he Hydra. Beat. Sorry, excuse yeah, me. Yeah. I don't know why I said that. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, the last, like, you know, just I really think it'd be cool to have our film studios there where we do our work at and then just a bunch of references to our sketches. That'd like the fun. alley that Batrock gets beat up in would be kind of yeah. fun, too. You know, Spider Luke's wrestling cage. Things like that. That'd be sweet. I mean, that's, you know, like we saw Critical Clicks' map recently, and they did a lot of shout-outs to the content they make, and uh, I love that. I think that's really cool. I would love to do something similar. I mean, if it's it's easy to make a neoprene map, I'm not opposed to it. Oh, I would totally. It's not... So I feel like yeah. rendering getting that would be designed, difficult. Yeah. It's not hard to get like the physical map. That part's easy. It's getting yeah, getting the graphic design, the graphic design like We'd nailed have to pay in with the squares and yeah. everything. Pay people, uh, yeah, <laughs> to do what they're talented at and skilled at. What if we pay them exposure though? <laughs> Giving oh, them, dude, that's genius. Money. They can eat we'll, uh, exposure. That's my favorite yeah, part we'll, about exposure. We'll give you shout outs on our like our podcast and YouTube. Like that's how we'll, we'll show you our yeah. analytics. It'll get you pretty good. Oh, I, yeah. I love when people reach out to me and say. Hey, I have this idea. I have this idea, man. So here's what you can do for me. I've had that happen way too many yikes. times. Yeah. <laughs> How about you? you have a plan? And we'll do it. No, like I'm. I'm honestly thinking I'm going to start like a TV show. I've had people tell me that, and they're like, "Can you help me with it?" I'm like, "No. no. <laughs> not, no. I don't care about your TV show. Sorry. Sorry. Not sorry." Uh, a map I would like. I think the Billion Clicks Mansion would go really hard. Dude, it would go so I think hard. It would be really sick. We have uh, no footage of Billion Clicks. We have Clicks no mansion. footage of the Billion Clicks Mansion. Uh, it's an idea. We have stock photos. Same thing from, of like, if we I had mean, the, we, we have footage, just the not The Rowdy Ranch Hands Ranch. That could also be neat with a bank oh, on the map. Uh, I, believe, <laughs> Street. I believe that it's also Billion Clicks. Ranch. That is also Billion yes. I mean, it is Billion Clicks Ranch. Dude, yes, the default dude. on a loan. That is true. This is deep lore that only us three understand. Uh, but yeah, those would be really, really fun maps. As well as, I told Kevin this one time, uh, a few years ago, a big tornado went through 41st Street in Sioux Falls. And I told Kevin that when, if he would win the ROC Heroes for Huntington's, he should make 41st Street after it gets hit by the tornado with the tree on his house. Because his house was really close oh, to 41st yeah. Street. And a tree fell right on top of it. As well as, like, destroying a Joanne's Fabrics and Pizza Ranch and stuff. <laughs> so, like, yeah, just, and you could get it copyright free by having the sign, the like, sign broken in half. Over. Yeah, yeah, a couple of J and an N or whatever. Just, like, it's just broken. Best it's Buy like, is just, like, B, yeah, blank, dude, exactly. Y. So, like, you could show the wreckage of, like, the tornado going through Sioux Falls. What was it? Auto? Zone that just got murked. AutoZone yeah. was like Auto wiped off got, the face of the planet, dude. AutoZone got crit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's also a map. I think it'd be really, really funny. Uh, all right. And then Luke 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 asks, with recent changes to the Spider-Man team ability, as well as Avengers, it got me thinking. Uh, we haven't had a new team ability created in a while. Shh, Wonder Woman. Shh. So besides Wonder Woman, uh, if you were to create a new team ability for, <laughs> for, for say, Patriot props... What would it do, and who would be the first figure to receive the team ability? Uh, Patriot props would give shape change on a six. It'd be like scrolls. Scrolls. That's pretty good. Okay. That's pretty good. That makes sense. But that's not really a new ability. That's not a new team ability, no. Uh, so maybe you with... redo scrolls as well, and you make it so shape change on a... Oh, wait, no. They already did this. Excuse yeah, me. I was going to say the plus that. one. Plus one to shape change? Yeah. Uh, I think maybe just like an ability to like remove a piece of terrain and then place a different kind of that terrain in its square. Kind of just like takes it, changes it into something else, put it back. That'd be kind of neat. So like choose a piece of uh, blocking, turn it to hindering. You know, just for free, once per turn, whatever. Sure. Yeah, I like that. That's that's all I could think of for it. That would make sense to me. Could, there could be like an Iconics team ability that's like specific to all of them. And it's just like some universal one that's similar. Not like... Not the WWE in the way, and they'd have to... Never make a team ability like that ever again. A little, a little too good. Because it, like too every good. time I yeah, play against WWE, WWE it's well, like... Well, I didn't see a ton of play. It just no, wrecked the meta Because all of the years. figures were like over-costed for it. <laughs> no, it's because it's like, okay, so what does this do? Well, it lets me move across the map. You can't target me. You know uh, it's uncopyable. It it's takes. This... Yeah. I'm not it's saying, like eight I'm not lines of text. Thing. I'm just saying, like, can't be targeted, like... 
similar to like dolphin symbol that like, can't be targeted outside of like four squares yeah. when on click one not not specifically but, like wwe target i'm just saying never make a team ability that is like eight lines no. of text again yeah. that that's what i was getting at i don't mean the whole that's ability it. but i mean like aspects of it because like it was just like super unique and obviously like uh very hard for people to decipher like all the stuff it did because then yeah. it had different set of rules if it was multiversal game or in universe game which was probably the worst part like the double set of rules for one oh, team gosh. ability yeah but no like had they done that with tmnt or star trek any of like the indie like stuff that we were getting had they had like these separate team abilities that were very unique and They're not necessarily powerful, but like, like Star Trek just had like copies of other team abilities. Yeah, you know, Star Trek was team bad. Team had just, none, which sucked. Yeah, Team T totally should have had shell shock or something. something. Yeah, yeah. The hand, the hand, or the, the foot, whatever. The foot should have had one, and the TMT crew should have had one too. But yeah. Those are, oh, as far as the first person to get the Patriot props, team ability, uh, just the Calder Ness figure that's going to get made, obviously. <laughs> Duh, that guy. Uh, I mean, you could give it to a Captain America. You give it to a Captain America. Because that's probably who you dressed up as the yeah. most. No, easily, yeah. yeah. Cap or Ash are my, my number so one. Are you giving him the cosplayer keyword? Yeah, yeah, he's got to get the cosplayer keyword. Oh, that could also be we'll another, make up new keywords another part of it. He could, uh, he could like choose to be a named character from your sideline. He's cosplaying oh, that man. character. To, uh, that'd be an ability that a certain character would have. That'd be too good for a team ability. Yeah. Anyways, guys, that is the show. If you want to go ahead and support Dial H for Hero Clicks, use code DIALH10 for 10% off your order at shop.wizkids.com for the official WizKids product. You can go ahead and pre-order all sorts of cool stuff like Iconics and whatnot. As well, if you want to support us, you can go ahead and do so on Patreon by straight up donating money to us. We use it to go right back into the studio and pay for things like expenses for the International Player Foundation. We still need a couple hundred yes. bucks to meet the goal there. We're at $2,380. We want to be at $3,000 for the International Player Foundation. We already are bringing over Edison Lee and Andrea Gattini to Worlds, uh, one from Singapore and one from Italy. So please help us make it fully happen to give them a real, real nice, not all expense, but a most expense paid trip uh, to America for Worlds this September, guys. And like always, Dolly Trader Hooks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. You can find cool stuff in stock every day. We all the latest here who singles and see products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Simeon, anything you want to say before we close out? Happy trails. Ian, anything you want to say before we close out? Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like 100 instant deadpan human. Over oh, yeah. six oh, people yeah. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fools. They're going to be able to edit that out for sure. That's cool because of this event. I'm going to make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding? Wow, wow, wow. Uh, happy trails.